In this video, I'll be doing the WJ Knuckle Swap and Brake Upgrade. I'll be going over all the different options you have to achieve this, as well as the whys and why nots to, uh, to each of those options. But first, I must give you the disclaimer. Let's talk about why you need the quarter inch spacer. Here we have on the right, the XJ knuckle and on the left, the WJ knuckle, and they're both sitting on their face or the mounting surface for the bearing hub. And you can see right away that the XJ knuckle sits a little bit higher or the center point for the mounting of the ball joint sits a little bit higher than this. So we know from that alone, we had that quarter inch spacer, and now we're more in line. Now, why does that matter? <clears throat> well, I've heard people talk about that it lines up the axle so that there's not binding as it turns with it. Well, I don't, that's not the case. Um, the, uh, any kind of binding that would happen would be because the U joint was off center from the center point of the ball joints and that's fixed. It goes in so far, the ball joints center point is fixed to the C channel of the axle. It has nothing to do with the, um, with the knuckle. Uh, instead it has to do with how far out this sits. And what I discovered is it's actually here we go. We've got the XJ hub. And as we can see, as it scoots in, so I can get this on video, it cannot sit flush. It is hitting the back side, oops, the back surface of the hub against the surface of, let me get some light in there, of the axle right here. So it needs that quarter inch spacer for proper alignment of the hub to the axle. And that's it. That's the only reason. Here is the WJ bearing. And I saw some people talking about, all right, well, if you're going to five on five anyway, why not use the WJ? Well, the WJ bearing still has that same problem. Okay, I had to move it up onto the workbench. But after I get 
the washer which is in there I already put it in there before I turn the camera on and the nut on I don't think the WJ hub can be used they were all the way flush against the axle at all because we can't get a cotter pin through the the safety hole so I don't I don't it does not appear that you can use the WJ uh, hub or bearing hub at all. As far as other bearing hubs, I, I don't know, nor do I have the money to buy every other Dana 30 hub that's out there. The JK, the, I don't know if the JL has it or the TJ or the CJ5 or the CJ7 or, you know, any of them that have the Dana 30s. Um, so, uh, you know, that's, as far as I can tell, it's pretty much clear that you want to use the, uh, the quarter inch spacer. That's by far going to be the easiest. All right. So the last bit I'm going to kind of discuss is why you should weld it on. Um, and that's going to be because the majority of the weight from the vehicle sits on the hub which sits right here and is perfectly machined to fit in there see how it's not rattling at all and so it's bearing the weight right along here uh, it is bearing some weight on on the on the bolts but its majority of it is right here now if you put the spacer on you can see Ooh, and it needs, there it goes. You put the spacer on, you can see I've lost the majority of that lip into the spacer. Uh, and so if I don't weld it on, then the, uh, the majority of the weight's going to land on the bolts and not on the hub itself. If I weld it to the knuckle, then it's carrying the weight on the spacer, but it's then transferring into the knuckle uh, through the weld. So weld it, weld it well. Okay, now we're to the welding of the spacer to the knuckle. And I'm gonna just kind of have to show you my layout. And then when I pull everything together, it's just gonna move quick. Um, so I don't know how much talking I'm gonna be able to do. But uh, essentially what I've got is a grounding plane set up to do the welding. I'm going to bolt everything together. These are the WJ um, hubs that I don't care if it gets too hot. They're throw away anyway. Um, so I'm just going to weld it while it's all together. And then once it's done welding, drop it into the bucket of sand, cover it in sand, and then just leave it overnight. And at that point, you know, let it cool nice and slow. So... That's going to be pretty much it. And uh, as far as heating it, um, I do have a torch. Uh, but the preheat is going to actually come from my barbecue pit. So I've got them out there just basically in an oven warming up. And I'm just going to grab them, bring them in, bolt everything together, and start welding it. So let's get to it. <clears throat> in the sea.
realize I forgot to mention that the reason you preheat the knuckle is so that you can get good penetration when you weld it. If you just weld it straight, uh, it won't get a, a good enough penetration down into that cast steel. Uh, and then the reason you, after you're done, you toss it into some sand or wrap it in a you know welding blanket or something is you want it to cool slowly. And that's because since it's cast, uh, if it cools rapidly, it can uh, crack at the welds. So uh, you just want it to cool down slowly. The ball joints do differ slightly. Uh, the upper XJ ball joint, which is the old one I removed, fits nice and snug. And on the WJ knuckle, it too can work. So you don't necessarily have to replace the upper ball joint, since I'm in there, I'm going to go ahead and replace both of them anyway. The lower ball joint is a different story though. It's good on the XJ for the XJ, but on the WJ, it's actually loose. And we're talking about not the length of this, but the taper. The type of taper in the ball joint shaft is, is slightly different in the lower one for the WJ. So you need to get a WJ uh lower ball joint to replace your xj lower ball joint so that it fits nice and snug this guy and that guy and vice versa say so that one doesn't go down as far as it does on the wj because but the taper is slightly different. So that's the only thing you need to replace as far as ball joints. Technically it's just the lower, although I recommend if you're doing one, you might as well do both and get them both knocked out at the same time. So now that everything's been welded, cleaned and painted, we're ready for reassembly. We're gonna find out whether or not the Explorer rotors, that the Explorer Sport Track rotors or whatever I looked up on the, uh, the forums that still exist out there recommend you should be able to use without re-drilling the rotor, um, the WJ rotor. Uh, we'll see if that actually is the case. Uh, and then one other thing I needed to point out was the with the quarter inch spacer on the knuckle, some said that you needed a longer bolt to, uh, to bolt it to. And that is true if you're looking at the WJ uh, bolt itself. If you look here, I have the WJ bolt and then the XJ bolt side by side and the XJ bolt is actually a quarter inch longer. So really all you need to do is toss the WJ bolts for that hub bearing and reuse your XJ bolts and you're good to go. So let's get at it. Snack time. No. Nope. All right, let's wait for snack. What did mama pack this time? Woo, chips. Mmm.
It's more to the side. Yeah, we're working back in here anyway. Oh, that's fantastic, John. Yes, it's working. It's working. Oh, I gotta redo. There we go. What, do you think you're just banging on it for and I'm gonna do anything? I know. I, I bang on a lot of things and sometimes it doesn't do anything. <laughs> yep. That's exactly it. What? Oh, it it doesn't fit because it's just for the YJ. I mean the yeah, uh, WJ. Yeah, yeah. For you viewers, so you know, the XJ dust shield, brake dust shield does not fit the WJ knuckle. <laughs> Everything's German torque specs. <laughs> it's good day. You could always torque this German. <laughs> 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 That's a different kind of channel. <laughs> That's YouTube Red. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't like count. Mm. Needs more. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Boom! So the final question is, is it the right diameter? Is the spacing now back? Looking. Yeah. Correct. As you saw there, you need to grind down the XJ wheel bearing hub just a little bit, the outer edge there, in order to clear the back of the Explorer Sport Track rotor. Um, but now we're going to take a look at the uh, back spacing or the, the how far back does that rotor sit uh, and see whether or not it'll actually work. And as you can see, it does sit too far back. It actually just barely rubs this little metal uh, bracket. Um, it You want your rotor to sit as evenly in the middle of this gap so that you have even pad wear um, as you brake. So what does that mean? That means this needs to come out or the bracket needs to go back. So I would say out of the options I've kind of uh, played around with uh, on this particular setup, because I've filmed this particular shot like eight times, it seems like, um, I, the, I would take either the knuckle or actually I would take the knuckle to a machine shop, a machinist that can machine like 2.5 millimeters off the surface and get an even uh surface on on this to move the bracket back like 2.5 millimeters um, and then after you've done that you should be able to uh, safely run um, the uh, the explorer uh, rotor and it'll be you know relatively even to the middle of this i have toyed with the thought of well okay if you moved the hub bearing and rotor assembly and the whole thing out like 2.5 millimeters, then it would also uh, sit even, which means that the quarter inch spacer that we originally welded to the knuckle needs to be another 2.5 millimeters thick, thicker, which I don't think they sell, you know, sheet metal in that thickness, which then would lead to another like machined part that a company would have to produce with uh, an exact perfect thickness to make this rotor work um and then the last is i did try a three millimeter spacer behind the rotor And here it is with that three millimeter spacer. You can see, it's hard to tell. It's, it's centered enough that it looks, you know, usable. It, to me, it does look a little a hair closer to this side, which is kind of where I ballparked the figure of 2.5 millimeters instead of three millimeters. I just don't feel comfortable with like it spaces it out it moves it more to the center of this um, if you put this on first and then the rotor on top of that 
but just something about it makes me feel a little uneasy. Um, but I, I felt like I wanted to let everybody sort of know kind of what I've gone through and the different options. Okay, if you're looking to keep the XJ five on four and a half lug pattern and redrill the WJ uh, rotor, then uh, do not you do not need the quarter inch uh, washer spacer that goes to space out the caliper bracket because the XJ it's not quite a quarter. Uh, the light's too bright, but the black line is a quarter. It's like three sixteenths uh, difference, so it should be close enough. And I think that's why people just run it like that. In closing, this was quite an ordeal of testing and shooting and reshooting and just going back and forth with it. But I think in the end, I figured out the basics of your two options between five on four and a half and five on five. As we went over before, if you're sticking with the XJ five on four and a half lug pattern, um, option one is to redrill the WJ rotor to the five on four and a half lug pattern, and then it should slide on in roughly center uh, in your caliper bracket. Or if you really want to use the Ford Explorer uh, Sport Track rotor, then I would recommend taking your knuckle to a machine shop and have them machine this surface right here down 2.5 millimeter. So that'll move the bracket back 2.5 millimeter and that should center the Explorer rotor uh, and work uh, in that particular case. If you're like me and you're running five on five rims, then I found the easiest solution really is to just keep the WJ brake system in its entirety, the wheel hub bearing, as well as the rotor and the brakes and it all, and really all you need to do is one, I did find that you can grind down that center nut by about one thread length or width, uh, just enough to get that cotter pin to slide through. And then you have to buy this quarter inch spacer, or you can make your own. It's just a washer about a quarter inch thick. So that since you've welded on that quarter inch spacer and moved everything forward quarter inch, you need to space the brake caliper out a quarter inch and get longer bolts um, at the hardware store. So that was super simple to do. Um, and I believe it was iron rock off road that sells that and i'll put a link down in the description actually they sell a kit with the quarter inch uh, uh, knuckle weld on and uh, these washer spacers all as one kit uh, so that might be the route you go if you're running that five on five all right folks that pretty much sums it up so if you like this or it was helpful in any way smash that like button and hit the subscribe and then leave a comment down at the bottom there about how weird Harold can be. Thanks for watching.